Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number 65 in our incredible new tutorial series where you're unleashing the power of your Raspberry Pi Pico W. What I will need you to do is pour yourself a nice tall glass of ice cold coffee. That would be straight up black coffee poured over ice no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to our friends over at SunFounder. SunFounder is actually sponsoring this most excellent series of video lessons. And in this class, we will be using the Kepler kit for Raspberry Pi Pico W. Now, hopefully most of you guys already have your gear, but if you don't, take a look down in the description, there is a link over to Amazon and you can hop on over there and pick your kit up. And believe me, your life and my life are gonna be a whole lot easier if we are working on identical hardware. But enough of this sh shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and talk about what I am going to teach you today. And what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you my solution to the homework assignment that I gave you in lesson number 64. But, my, but I must first ask, how many of you were successful? If you were successful, leave a comment down below. I am legend double chest bump. And if you were not successful, leave a comment down below. I folded up like a cheap Walmart lawn chair. Now, hopefully most of you got this because I showed you in lesson number 36, how to interact with the servo using MicroPython on the Raspberry Pi Pico W. I showed you how to set up the PWM pins. I showed you how to do the calculation where you get a right value from the angle that you want. I showed you all of that. And what your assignment was, was to take what we had already done and create a class to create a, a servo class so that we can interact with the servo using object-oriented programming. So hopefully most of you guys were successful, but I'll jump in, I'll show you my solution. And if you had any problems, you can see how to do it from my solution today. So what I need to do is I need to get out of your way. <clears throat> I need you to fire up Thonny and come in and get ready to create this servo class. So if we're going to create a servo class, <clears throat> what are we going to start with? Well, we'll create a class. I'm going to call it servo. And then what do we always do? We need to do our init. So I'm going to define the underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore. What do we need to pass itself? That will be the name of the object that we create. And then I'll just call it S pin for servo pin. So when we create the object, we'll have to pass it the pin that we are connected to. And then what we will need to do is put our colon. And now I'm going to set up the servo here. And I want this to be a standalone class. I don't, <coughs> I don't want it to depend on things that are going on outside the class. So I'm going to go ahead and import machine. I'm going to import machine here inside of the class. And now I am going to set up the PWM on the servo pin or the S pin. And I will do that by self dot. I got to give it some name to interact with this. You can call it whatever you want, but I'm going to call it OBJ. And then that is going to be equal to machine, the library that we just imported dot PWM, the method. And now I have to say machine dot pin and then what pin s pin. Now this particular command I explained in lesson number 36. So I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here. It's just how you set up a PWM pin on the Raspberry Pi Pico W. Now what I'm going to do is now I need to also I close the I, I close the S pin. Now I need to close the PWM method. All right. Now what I need to do is I need to set the frequency. I need to set the frequency of that PWM pin. And I explained in lesson number 36. Okay, this is my object self.obj. 
And now I explained in lesson number 50, what we do is a dot frequency in lesson number 36, I mean, and then we set that to 50 Hertz. If this doesn't make sense, go back and watch lesson number 36. So that is set up. Now I need to define my method. So I'm going to define, I'm going to call it POS for position. <clears throat> it's going to need self because it always needs self. That's the servo name that we're going to create. And then I need an angle. <clears throat> so I'm going to pass this method an angle, and then I want to move the servo to that angle. <clears throat> so what we would need to do is we would need to calculate a right vowel, and I, I derived this equation in lesson number 36, and the equation is 6553 divided by 180 times the angle that I want plus 16 38. I derived this in lesson number 36. Now, why is it <clears throat> right vowel and angle and it's not self dot right vowel or self dot angle? Because this doesn't have anything to do with the servo object itself. It's parameters that I'm passing to go to that angle. Okay, so it doesn't need all that self nonsense. Now, self dot object frequency 50, that is tied to the servo. Self dot object equal machine dot PWM, that is, that really matters. Now we would probably be a little bit better here so we could keep track of it if we needed to ask it what it was later. We could say self dot uh, servo pin is equal to S pin. It worked the way I did it, but I would rather remember what the servo pin was because I might need it at some point. And then here <clears throat> I would do self dot servo pin. Either one of those would work. But when you get down to writing the values, you don't do that self business because the values that you are writing, the position that you're putting the servo to is not intrinsically associated with the servo. It's just something that you're setting it to. Okay. So that should set it up. Now what we do is we want to move the servo <clears throat> to that position. So we go to our object self <clears throat> dot o <coughs> obj and then dot duty underscore unsigned 16 like that. And then the int value of right val that we just calculated. Again, explained in lesson number 36 in this most excellent series of lessons. All right, so we have created a class that allows us to create a servo object. Now we just got to come down and start writing our program. So I'm going to say import time because I'm going to, going to want to do some delays. I got to tell it the servo pin is equal to pin 17. Let me show you how I hook the servo up. Let me switch over here. Where can I find that? Here it is. Okay. The way I have this hooked up, <clears throat> I, will, I will become a little bit smaller for you. The red pin on the servo, the red pin on the servo is connected to pin 40, physical pin 40 on the Raspberry Pi Pico W. That is the corner pin. Ground is two over from that. So we, we have pin 40. 39, 38, physical pin 38. <clears throat> Let's look at our little card here. Yeah, that's physical pin 38 for the ground. And remember, brown wire is ground, so that goes to ground. Now the orange wire is the control wire, and we have that hooked up to GPIO pin 17, which is one over from the corner. So GPIO pin 17. <clears throat> That's what you need to know in order to hook it up like I have it hooked up. And then we'll come over to this view. So servo pin was GPIO pin 17. Now I create my servo object, my servo. You can call it whatever you want. You could call it blue servo, my blue servo, my pretty little servo, whatever you want. But what you do is you've got to call it something and something descriptive, all right? So we've got that 
set up as my servo. Now that is going to be equal to the class. What is my class? My class is servo. My class is servo. <clears throat> what am I connecting to? Servo pin. So let's look at this. When it sees this, it runs up here and it runs the init. Self is going to be what? My servo. So my servo dot servo pin is S pin, which we passed at 17. My servo dot OBG is equal to the library machine dot PWM, the method, and then we call machine dot pin, and then we set up self dot servo pin. Now again, you could just put S pin directly there, but I like kind of saving this in case I need it later. Now it's my self is my servo dot obj dot frequency. <coughs> I'm setting this servo, this particular servo and that particular PWM pin to 50 Hertz. All right. So we have set that thing up. Now let's see what we can do. Let's go while true. When it's true, true, true is always true. And now I'm going to see what angle do you want to set it up? So I'm going to say my angle is equal to, needs to be an int. I'm going to get this from the user. So I'm going to say input and then what angle do you desire? Desire like that question mark space in the string, in the input, and in the int. Okay, now what do I do? I just say my, my servo, which is my servo object that I just created, and then I call this method position. It's already set up. I don't need to call init. When I created the servo object, it set it up, now I just need to call the method position. So my servo dot put <coughs> position, what do I write to it? What do I write to it? I just write to it the angle, my angle, like that. I'm going to come up to this size again. I'm going to set it to my angle, and then <coughs> I'm going to close it. And I don't really need to put a delay in here because the input the next time should get that. Could it really be this easy? Let's see. I'm going to run it. What angle do you desire? All eyes on the servo. I desire an angle of zero and boom, it goes there to zero. Now, what if I say I want 180 and boom, it goes to 180. Now, I will say one little thing I don't like very much. I think I like this to be I'm going to set it back to zero. So I'll say go to zero. Okay. And there it is. And I really want zero to be pointing along the positive X axis. So I move that horn. So the kind of servo lines up with the way that we normally think of, of angles in math and the positive X axis is zero angle. And then we come this way as we, uh, as we, uh, go to positive angle. So I'm going to say 180 now and boom, goes to 180. What about 90? Boom, 90. How about 45? 45. 135 goes to 135. Look at that. Okay. So what is nice about this? All of the heavy work is done in the servo class. Now in the future, when you want to use the servo, just go get your servo class and use it. And you don't have to go back and watch the lesson 36 every time you want to use the servo because all of the stuff you have to remember and all the hard stuff is up here. And then all you have to do is the easy stuff down here. Also, what could we do? We could do something like, let's make a for loop for I in range, for I in range. <clears throat> I want to go from a zero angle to 180 in steps of one degree. Okay, like that. And then I just do a my servo dot POS. That's what I called it, wasn't it? Yes, POS. And then what angle do I apply? The angle I. 
All right. And now I do need to do a time dot sleep and I'll do about 0.2 seconds on each degree. And then I should go from zero to, I should go from zero to 180. And now I can go back the other way for I in range. I want to go from 180 back to zero and I want to go in steps of minus one like that. Okay. And now what do I do? my servo.pos I go to I again and then I do a time dot sleep and that time dot sleep again is 0.2 let's do that now all eyes on the servo let's run this thing and boom okay it is coming it is working its way around to 180 but I hate to say this that is way way too slow so I'm going to go to like 0.05 okay so it'll move a little faster let's let's get a little giddy up in our servo here so we'll go 0 0.05 let's run it again all eyes on the servo zero okay that is nice it is coming around the bend at 90 degrees on its way to 135 it's at 135 on its way to 180 and it reverses back to 135 on its way to 90 gets to 90 then it goes to 45 and then back home to zero look at that okay guys hopefully you figured this out but i wanted right this is like our third example this is like our third example of creating a class and so hopefully now classes and methods make a whole lot more sense to you and hopefully you guys were able to uh you you were able to do this homework because really it was just applying and practicing the things that we had done in earlier lessons okay i am gonna what i'm gonna do next week is i'm gonna show you the kind of cool thing that we have now is we created this chunk of code which is a class and I'm going to show you next week how you can take that class and make it a library where you never even have to look at this thing again that anytime you want to do the servo you're just going to load the servo library that we are going to make and then all you're going to have to do is something like my servo dot pos and then give it the value and all you're going to have up here is just importing the library okay that is what we are going to do next week guys i hope you're having as much fun taking these classes as i am making them as always i want to give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at patreon you guys that are supporting me on patreon you're the ones that keep this great content coming I want to say a big thank you to you you can also help me by giving me a thumbs up on the video if you leave a comment down below that'll help me with the old YouTube juice and this video will be shown to more people if you have not already subscribed to the channel when you do ring that bell so you'll get notifications when future lessons drop and most importantly share this video with other people because the world needs more people doing engineering and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos Paul McWhorter with toptechboy.com. I will talk to you guys later.